Lord, we ask you to impart courage and strength to us. And for those listening, who are listening after the rapture, especially, courage, peace, and trust in the Lord. For he has wonderful plans for us. Well, this is a really different uh, message tonight. The Lord has shifted gears. He's talking more about what is going to happen after the rapture. And he's talking about the things that he's going to allow to happen to America and to our continent and the things he's not going to allow to happen and what he has in store for America after the tribulation. So uh, just a little background on this. I really have been yearning to know more about the sequence of events and to have an understanding of how all the puzzle pieces fit together. And it finally came to a head uh, yesterday when I cried out to the Lord and I said, Lord, please, please have mercy on us and share with us what your plans are. And he did. (laughs) And it was rather funny the way it all started. So I'm just going to begin reading it to you. I had a communion service and afterwards, uh, when I had received communion, the Lord said, I will instruct you about these things. And the scripture that came to mind is this poor woman cried aloud and the Lord heard her. (laughs) Then he, then I said to him, but I have done nothing to deserve this knowledge, Lord. You know, like fasting for weeks and all the things that uh, prophets are supposed to do, right? I haven't done anything like that. So I don't deserve this knowledge, but I sure would like to have it anyway. Anyway, he said, do you think for one moment this depends on your righteousness? And I thought about it for a minute, and I said, well, I guess maybe I do. Well, you're wrong. All depends on my mercy, my love, and I have chosen to be merciful to you tonight. Lord, you're merciful to me every night. True, but why do you suppose you want to know all these things? And I thought for a minute, and I said, because you put the desire there? How did you guess that, he said, smiling. So he began at that point. The destroyer, Nibiru, the planet Nibiru, will not come until the end. The things you have been shown are to happen after you are taken. This will be a record for some that they not lose hope and clearly see that I am in control. They can take me at my word, and it's not hopeless. I want mankind to have confidence in me and in my mercy. That is why I have foretold these events, at least in part. To have some kind of road map that will give them security, they can see things unfolding and will know I foretold and am in control. I already said that, didn't I? Yes, Lord, you did. He said, well, I'm repeating it because it is so important that men not fall into despair. The temptation to fall into despair will be very powerful, and by this the devil will snatch many away in his grip. You must know, remnant of earth, there will be an end to the tragedy, and the day will come when all is restored in pristine purity, and evil is harnessed. In those times, whatever evil emerges will be from the hearts of men, not demons. And there will be a baptism by fire to cleanse the earth and the hearts of men. It will never be forgotten by those remaining alive. And yet as time goes by, men will forget, as they did at the waters of Meribah. And again I shall be forced to purify the evil from earth, but this time for good. The destroyer, again he's speaking of the planet Nibiru, will not come until you are removed, my brides. There will be a season of chaos directly after you leave, in which nations will conquer nations. Martial law will be installed under Sharia principles. All that do not renounce me will be slain. All that take the mark of the beast, they will perish. Know that my mercy shall know no boundaries for those who call to me in these times. I want to say something uh, just aside here. There is the technology now that if you take that mark, they can actually affect your thinking. 
Uh, they can deprive you of thoughts about God and cause you to think more logically and to have scorn and contempt and to reject him uh, simply by stimulating parts of the brain electronically. They can also um, instruct you electronically to go into a mad frenzy and to kill whatever is in front of you, to fight and to kill. There are so many things that can be done now. The technology is way, way, way advanced. And anyone who takes that mark are going to lose their mind, literally. Their mind is going to be in the hands of the government. And whatever the government wants, well, that's what you'll be doing because you'll be stimulated in that way. So uh, the other thing is, is that it's written in Revelation that those who take the mark are going to suffer terribly. Uh, pain, like the sting of a scorpion, for many months. And they'll want to be dead. They'll look at ways to die, and they won't be able to. This is written in Revelation. And for those of you who didn't believe the rapture was real, well, it was real. And the next thing is the mark, and that's real. And that suffering from having the mark is real. Plus, you'll never be able to repent and receive the Lord. It'll be the end. So don't take the mark. Okay, continuing on with his, with his message. Rise up, my people, and call unto me, and I will save you. Trust me, trust me, even with your heads. What you suffer on earth will be nothing compared to those with the mark. The beasts you question me about are being bred inside the earth. They too will come forth to wreak havoc at the appropriate time. And what he's referencing there is the um, the strange giants in Ezekiel's dream that I just posted a couple days ago. And I thought about it for a minute. I thought, oh my God, the animals, how are they going to suffer? And the Lord picked up on my thought and he said, the living will envy the dead. This goes for every species, not just man. Do I not love each and every creature with tenderness and devotion? Do I not provide for them every day, water to swim in, food to eat, sun to warm? My providence for them abounds, but they will come to me during the worst part, as already many have, and are happily with me in heaven. Claire, I love all creatures. I know how to ease their suffering. Trust me. Lord, I can't imagine how much pain it will cause you to look upon their estate in those times. He continued, All of creation is suffering for this sinful generation. All. It is the consummation and pinnacle of evil from the very beginning. Things are going to gradually deteriorate as the planet gets closer and Satan will be in a hurry to impose his agenda on mankind. There will be desperate attempts to force the mark, and the suffering of those with families will be devastating. But I will be with them to give them strength. Only just endure to the end, for the crown of victory awaits you. When people have gotten to the point where they believe there is no more hope, That is when I will come and restore all things. Right then, at the very darkest hour, I will come. As in Ezekiel's dream, there will remain remnants of technology that functions. I'm going to take a break here and just insert a couple things. I've been looking into the three days of darkness and uh, praying about it, and it really... It really seems to be correct that the three days of darkness will be at the very end. When the planet Nibiru uh, comes closest to the Earth and the poles start to shift dramatically, uh, according to the dream that Ezekiel had a few nights ago that I posted about those strange creatures and the man that had to be turned upside down for the, um, for the breathing apparatus to work because the fluids had to go in the opposite direction. There's going to come a time in the three days of darkness and the the flipping of the poles that will be where demons and terror will just abound on the earth but the very moment the Lord sets his foot on Mount Zion that will be the end of those demons his angels will go throughout the earth and the the air and he'll destroy they'll destroy every demon or bind it 
as the scriptures say, bound for a thousand years. So that is definitely going to happen. But that will happen after the three days of darkness, which will be ended by the Lord coming with his angels. That's what I believe. So um, a lot of people wonder, well, what kind of technology is going to be left after all of this devastation? So that's where I'm going to pick up on this. Okay, in Ezekiel's dream, there will remain remnants of technology and functions. I have protected this because there will be a need for communication. I will continue to use the internet, radio, and other media to reach my people with a message of hope. All will not disintegrate as you suppose. And I have not allowed for the e-bomb that fries all the technology. I really wondered about that, Lord. And he answered, no, it's going to be much more like the movie you saw, 10.5 Apocalypse. And in that movie, guys, when the continent of America was being divided in half, there was a helicopter flying overhead, uh, observing the whole thing. He said, the rapture will be the beginning of the end. All are waiting for that, not only Christians, but the evil ones as well. They will take advantage to install their system because of the disappearance of many. Yet it will take time. There will be intervals of peace. Your country will not be completely destroyed. Land masses, earthquakes, the separation of the continent will not happen until the end. In the meantime, there will be war on your soil. I have told you about Miami. Do not listen to other voices. What I told you is accurate. What you said about Miami is that when a nuclear weapon is used on the city of Miami, he will be rapturing us within that day or week, possibly, but I'm pretty sure it's a day, the day, the same day. And this really fits very well with the other dreams that he's given us. For instance, when Ezekiel was taken up in a bus um, during the rapture, he observed thousands and thousands of warriors descending down on the earth, and the earth was in chaos. There was smoke rising from the earth. So uh, what he's basically saying is there's going to be a nuclear event uh, or several nuclear events, and you will be taken from the earth right after that. So he's repeating that because, you know, I'm human, and I think to myself, well, was is that really... Was that word really secure? There's so many different scenarios out there, Lord. Is that really you telling me that? And he's confirmed several times that Miami is going to be the key. Uh, and, you know, for folks who think, well, it's written, no one knows the day or the hour. Well, it should, no one knows the day or the hour that Miami's going to be bombed. I mean, the Russians could plan it for one time, but technology could fail, so it wouldn't work, and they'd have to pick another time. Or a, a bunch of different things could happen to thwart them from knowing exactly the day and hour that that's going to happen. But he's saying that that's a sign to you. Lift up your heads because your redemption draws nigh. And that also fits with the uh, Matthew's rendition, the 24th chapter of Matthew that after this time of extreme chaos, the Lord will come. So, moving along. Lord, I'm so sorry for giving in to other ideas and being weak. Please help me to have complete trust and confidence in you, please. He replied, Your confession moves my heart to tears. And I did see tears streaming down his cheeks. And he said, You're not alone, you know. What I mean to say is that the forces are working against you to cause doubt and scruples. But I've heard your cry, my love, and I will help you. Claire, look at me. And just at that moment, I, I went from the looking at my um, computer screen to looking at him. He was right behind it, sitting right behind it, looking at me. And his face became so visible, I could almost touch it. And his eyes were so tender, and I said, Lord, you are so beautiful. And he said, I'm beautiful for you, my bride, and for my brides. I love and cherish you all, despite your many flaws and weaknesses. Your heart is for me alone, and that I'm eternally grateful for. Never will I forsake you. And then he addressed 
my wishy-washiness or sometimes my, my doubting, sometimes you make an error in your own mind. But most of the time, almost all of the time, you were hearing me correctly. I want you to rest in that. I know you are trying very, very hard not to insert your own agendas, your own thoughts or ideas or scenarios or what you've heard from others. You have tried to keep it pure. I will honor that. I will give you details that are highly accurate. Then he continued on with the instruction. Even now, Russia is planning to strike your country. Even now, they are seriously stalking the American continent. They have many in place here in America. Weapons are hidden in the forests. Underground entrances will be opened up and American soil and artillery and other weapons will emerge. It will be, for the most part, a conventional war. Well, what he's talking is about after the um, initial nuclear things that we've seen happening. Oh, Miami especially was the nuclear event. And it seemed like there were other nuclear events, too, in um, several of the visions I had. But what he's saying is that they're going to move in on our soil, and there's going to be conventional war on our soil. And then I said, yes, Lord, I've been so confused about New York City. Is it going to be nuked or flooded by tsunamis? And he said, it's going to be nuked. But what about all those ideas of tsunamis and quakes uh, that different people are having? And he said, what will be left of New York City will go down underwater. It will actually happen simultaneously with the bombs. It will be both. Oh, Jesus, I feel so badly for all the innocents. Yes, my love, all the innocents. But remember, Claire, I love them more than you can possibly imagine. And I will take them quickly and mercifully. It will be for those who remain a hell on earth scenario. When I talk about innocence, I'm talking about the children that are born after the rapture, the animals, people in wheelchairs or mentally handicapped. You know, these people are all innocent. Continues, you saw the Koreans and the Russians. They will be in many areas as well as American Muslim recruits. That will be treacherous. People will lose faith in humanity because of the betrayals of their own kind. These recruits have been convinced they are doing a good thing by killing every man, woman, and child in the name of Allah. And they will find a vent for their anger at mankind, for the hard lives they lived because of the selfishness of many and the inequality, being rejected and looked down upon. They will be dazed with bloodlust, and there will be no stopping them without lethal force. Yet I will have my pockets of survivors, those who have not bent the knee to bail. I will protect them, but they will suffer much. They will be tried by fire when I come to be found worthy. This will be a very small percentage of mankind. Your family will be among those survivors. And much of what you taught them growing up was preparation for this time. There will be much brokenness and repentance among them. What you left behind for them will be a gold mine of instruction, but my spirit will be with them, and much that they do will be because they learned it from you when they were growing up. They will be healed of their bitterness and judgments as the realization dawns on them that you were both right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. And as a note on that, you know, um, we get a lot of scorn and contempt for believing in the rapture and the New World Order and the whole thing. And uh, our children are no different. So uh, I think the one thing that I taught my children when they were growing up was to rely on the Lord and to pray in every situation and to count on His help. And that may be what He's talking about. Plus, we lived in out-of-the-way places. We lived in the wilderness quite a bit. Then He said, Most of these things you have known, as I have spoken to you along the way, Much of what you think or your thoughts are mine. They are weighed and balanced with much consideration of truth. Truth is your plumb line, and as long as you hold to that, you will not err. Lord, what about Yellowstone? It has a capacity to destroy America. And here I want to say something uh, very quickly before I get into what he said, because I forgot about this until just now. 
after I saw the movie about Yellowstone, the super volcano movie, I was very shaken. And I really wondered what really is going to happen. And I went to the Lord in prayer. And the answer he gave, gave me was that he would have mercy. There would be mercy. And I'm not just talking about mercy for those who are not annihilated because of the huge area it's going to affect. He was talking about he's going to do something. He's going to intervene with Yellowstone so that it will not be as bad as it's predicted to be, not anywhere near as bad. And this is what he said. There is a pattern in Yellowstone. The main caldera will erupt, but it will be on a much smaller scale than is anticipated. This will be my doing, my mercy. However, there will be many new outlets for the magma, much like Kilauea. The magma will bubble up from underground for many miles, just as you have seen in the vision. And what he's talking about here with the vision, I kept seeing an eruption in Wyoming, but on a much smaller scale than what has been shown in the supervolcano. After the eruption, it was kind of like Mount St. Helens, the surrounding area for miles and miles, there were streams of lava just like what's been happening with Kilauea and Hawaii for decades. That's a far more tame response than what we were expecting from that volcano. Then he continued, I still have plans for America. I will break and humble her, but I will also restore. I wound and I bind up. Yes, this land is corrupt and has led many into heinous crimes. But still, there's a remnant of goodness which I shall increase. I will not totally destroy her, only severely break and reorder her thinking. Yes, there are groups of militants that will fight for liberty. They will be much like my people when they conquered enemy territory in the promised land. I will be with them. I will fight with them and protect them supernaturally because of what they stand for. They will be the backbone of this country when she is restored. There will be many heroes and saints among them. But Lord, I thought you viewed this whole thing like the mission movie, where you just allow yourself to die rather than take up arms. He answered me, not so. I will empower these men and be with them again for what they stand for. There will be skirmishes and wars round about. I have some very talented warriors planted among them. They will rise up at the appropriate time. They will be endowed with supernatural wisdom because they will rely on me and not their own devices. The cities will not be safe. The wilderness will be much safer. Yet there have been prepared creatures that will seek out humans and hunt them down in the forests and ravines. This is where great wisdom is called for. Many will use my name to defend themselves from these creatures, and I will work on their behalf. Monstrosities of nature, bred and tailored, to seek out and kill. So I want to break away from the message for a moment and tell you about a real-life episode of two young men that were in um, a young adults group in Montana when I was there with my children. Uh, with our children. We were there, and um, the young man had just been saved the day before, and his brother, he and his brother were going for a walk in Glacier National Park. It was springtime, early, early spring. They just rounded a bend when they heard the unmistakable sound of a grizzly sow who they assumed was protecting her cubs. As they looked, she was at full charge, only 40 feet away. They said all we knew to do was call on the name of Jesus. So in that moment, we both simultaneously said, In the name of Jesus, stop! And in that moment, she halted immediately, throwing up a cloud of dust. Then she grunted and lumbered off in the direction she would come from. That's the end of the story. So use the name of Jesus. I have seen so many miracles with the name of Jesus, things that you cannot control in any other way. Use the name of Jesus. It's powerful. So after he had 
shared that with me. He reached out his hand and placed it over mine tenderly. That's all for now, Claire. This is only a start. There will be more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for coming to my aid and rescuing me from all these converging thoughts that were bringing only confusion. You're welcome, my love. End of the message. And we uh, we discerned this message. We studied it. We prayed about it. And we discerned it. And we believed it. This is a prophecy from the Lord. So God bless you, YouTube family. Keep us in prayer as we pray for you.